Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and it's May 1st, 2022 edition of Market Outlook. So, uh, very uh, choppy and messy week. Let's get into it. Uh, first of all, taking a look at the key uh, U.S. indices, uh, three out of the four closed on new uh, lows this year, um, and even going back further probably about going back a year or more, roughly. Now, the key thing is, if you take a look at the Qs, right, tech-laden index, closed at new lows for the year, uh, the S&P as well, right, new clo closing lows, um, basically in three out of the four indices. The only one that didn't do that is uh, the Dow. So definitely more um, uh, value related stocks, big caps um, with less volatility, still closing poorly on the week. So in terms of looking at oversold conditions, one thing we can see here is that there are uh, two indices, both the IWM, right, which closed at or under its uh, two standard deviation Bollinger Band, uh, both in price and in real motion. Uh, we got the same scenario uh, in the S&P, closing outside the lower end of the bands, and those bands are starting to expand. So we have to be on the alert of an oversold bounce. That's the takeaway on these indices that have definitely been under tremendous pressure. So that's the bigger picture here. Now that doesn't mean that things can't continue to uh, run amok here on the downside, but we definitely have to be cautious and keep an eye. And if we can get back inside these bands on both the uh, S&P uh, and an IWM, that could help sing signal that we're going to get a nice bounce from here. Um, however, that is a requirement uh, and very important to note. So uh, seasonally, uh, obviously the uh, sell in May and go away is um, uh, definitely something that people are paying attention to. The number of bullish uh, people in the market, advisors, uh, professionals is at its lowest level. Um, and the other thing to note is that the sell-off in the queues and the market in general is the worst uh, that we've seen, uh, certainly in the NASDAQ since 1971, um, and just in general since 2008, some of the worst uh, results for the first quarter of the year. Okay, now moving on to a key um, intermarket relationship the S&P versus utilities, uh, definitely showing risk off. One thing to note is we've sort of gone in a sideways mode. Um, but if you look here, you can see we also got an interesting breakdown uh, under the 50-day moving average on Friday in utilities. So they got hit pretty hard as well. But um, we definitely want to see uh, and keep an eye on this particular intermarket relationship because you can see we've basically, even with this uh, sell-off in the market, uh, utilities have basically uh, matched the returns of the uh, S&P, um, and so sideways action. And um, any strength here in the market um, on a relative basis to the utilities would give us a short-term buy signal. So uh, we should note that as well. But at the moment, we're still risk off, and of course, on the longer term basis, um, you can see that utilities definitely outperforming. And again, <clears throat> what I want to reiterate is when we look at uh, intermarket relationships um, and you use a ratio chart, the fact that one is outperforming another doesn't mean that that one can also be under pressure. This is the perfect example here that even though utilities have been outperforming the S&P, you can see 
right? We did get a bit overbought touching the outer band of the uh, uh, trading band here in uh, the utilities and then have come off pretty, pretty hard. So uh, things can uh, go down even if they're outperforming another instrument. Okay, now moving on to looking at volume analysis, another thing that's interesting to note here is that the two indices that led on the downside, right, the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000, right, you can see one's down almost 17%, another is down over 21% year to date. They have very poor volume patterns here, distribution over the last two two weeks, not letting up. Now, the thing that's interesting, both uh, the S&P, uh, which is only down 13% year to date, and the Dow uh, over 9%, you can see things are sort of in a neutral zone um, over the last couple of weeks regarding volume. So, hence, um, the fact is that we are uh, getting a bit frothy on the downside, uh, and we could definitely see a potential bounce here. Um, on the other hand, you know, things can continue uh, in oversold conditions to get more oversold. And so that remains to be seen. But I'm not sitting here saying uh, this is a fresh sell signal um, and we just have to completely get short here um, or liquidate everything. Uh, caution is definitely uh, something uh, to be um, doing here. But on the other hand, we could definitely be subject to a short-term bounce over the next couple of weeks. And again, the key uh, thing to watch is looking at those two oversold indices, both the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell. And if they can get both back inside their real motion uh, lower uh, Bollinger Bands, get back inside, and on price, that's going to be your clue that the uh, sell-off here is going to be uh, on a pause, and we could get a nice pop to the upside. Okay, moving on to sector analysis, one thing that's clear is that with the sell-off this week, everything got hit. There was not one sector um, that showed positive performance. Um, the, um, what's interesting, though, is you can see on a year-to-date basis with the market down here um, showing 13% uh, uh, in the S&P, energy, of course, because of the situation in Europe and Ukraine and Russia, uh, has gotten a big uh, boost. And uh, a safety play like consumer staples also still positive on the year, but just barely 0.7%. So um, a risk-off play, right? Consumer staples uh, outperforming everything else. And of course, commodities and energy uh, doing uh, well because of uh, geopolitical pressure. Okay, now moving on to market hotspots, a couple things are really clear that risk-off and commodities are leading, right? You, one thing you can see, natural gas up 10% for the week. Corn also very, very strong and long volatility. <clears throat> the other thing to note is risk off is predominating. Semiconductors, definitely a risk on type play, um, definitely leading uh, on the downside and uh, as well as NASDAQ as well. And most important is this consumer discretionary spending down over 7% for the week. Definitely risk off is prevailing. So with that, I'm going to conclude. Again, you can see we're in a oversold condition. It could continue, but we have to be ready to reverse course and be able to take care of um, a potential rally even if it's short-lived. These rallies in bear markets like these can be quite explosive like we just recently uh, saw. All right, see you next week. Good luck with your trading and bye for now.